All right, it is the last preview for the divisional weekend, and it should be an exciting weekend of football. Another rematch between the Green Bay Packers, who came into this tournament as the sixth seed against the Atlanta Falcons, who have the number one overall seed in the NFC and host. Well, a home field advantage will have to go through Atlanta on the road to the Super Bowl. Now, if you might remember the last time these two teams played, it was a very close battle all the way down to the wire. The Falcons won it 20-17 to over Green Bay. Very, very good game between two very good teams. Green Bay has been resilient all year. So many injuries to on offense with Rodgers having a concussion, losing Jermichael Finley, their big-time tight end for the, whole se uh, for the rest of the year uh, in midseason. Uh, lots of tough injuries to have to deal with. Ryan Grant done for the season. And they've overcome a lot of them, and a lot of it's been because of their defense. So first thing we're going to do, uh, generate, some, uh, generate some keys to victory for the Green Bay Packers. We'll start with them. The first one they have to do is James Starks must cause a spark. Now, James Starks was the guy last week for Green Bay who had a huge game, a rookie running back, 23 carries, 123 yards, 5.3 yards a carry against the Philadelphia Eagles. Big, I mean, they need a boost in their running game. They have not had it with until with Ryan Grant going down. Uh, they haven't found it with Brandon Jackson. John Coons only a you know a short down short yardage back uh, coming out of the backfield. But they did a good job of really getting uh, the football into the hands of J James Starks, and he made a lot of plays with it. And he's going to have to cause a spark in this game because. The, you know, the cat's out of the bag now. Now the Atlanta Falcons, and everybody knows who James Starks is because of the week he had last week, and it's not going to be easy for him to just come out there and, you know, uh, dominate the way he did because also for two reasons. One, people are expecting it a little bit more now, and two, the Falcons have a better defense than the Eagles do. So, But he's got to do something for them on the ground. Second thing they're going to have to do, Clay Matthews must mimic his brother. Now, what do I mean by that? If you watch the BCS championship game on Monday night, uh, Casey Matthews had a big play. He knocked the ball out of Cam Newton's hands and gave Oregon a shot to win the game. Oregon recovered the fumble. They went down. They scored. They tied the game at 19. Big play by uh, Clay Matthews' brother, Casey. It almost won the game for him. And Clay Matthews is going to have to have a similar type of effect. He's going to have to get in the backfield, knock the ball out of Matt Ryan's hands, try to cause a sack, try to cause a fumble, something, because Ryan has got to be knocked out of his comfort zone if the Falcons are going to lose the game and if Green Bay is going to pull off the upset. Casey Ma Clay Matthews is going to have to do what his brother did and cause some turnovers and knock Matt Ryan on his can if they're going to have a chance in this one. The third thing the Packers have got to do is they've got to cover the middle of the field better than they did in the first matchup. Now, Tony Gonzalez, who didn't have a great year for Atlanta as the tight end, but he's getting older. That's probably why. But he had a big game against Green Bay in that first meeting. He had six catches for 51 yards and a touchdown. And he got open over the middle of the field. And I think that the Green Bay Packers, they're going to have the outside pretty well covered with Charles Woodson and Al Harris. But it's going to be the middle of the field. How do you cover the middle of the field? And how do you neutralize the other weapons? Now, somebody else for Atlanta is going to have to step up. Mike Jenkins, Harry Douglas, Tony Gonzalez. Somebody's going to have to step up and make a play in the middle of the field, and it's going to be up to Green Bay, Clay Matthews, uh, B.J. Raji, uh, some of those other guys to step back in there and make some plays over the middle of the seam and not let guys run run wide open uh, on uh, on defense. And for Atlanta, the, now let's get to their keys to victory. The first thing they have to do is Michael Turner must turn it on. In the last meeting between these two teams, uh, Michael Turner had 23 carries for 110 yards and a touchdown. Look, it's going to be hard for Matt Ryan to throw the ball around to Roddy White and to Michael Jenkins and Tony and guys like that because Charles Woodson and Al Harris are going to have the outside, again, pretty well covered. So the running game is going to have to be there. Michael Turner has been a top five fantasy running back for the last couple of years. He's been a walking 100-yard rusher when he's been healthy. Uh, he's gotten a great opportunity here, and he's done a great job. But I tell you what. He's got to be there again. You know Green Bay is going to come after him. You know they're going to try to prevent him from doing what he did in the first game where he rushed for over 100 yards and had a TD, but he's got to be on. He's got to take the pressure off of Matt Ryan if Green Bay is going to have a chance. He can't fumble on the one-yard line like he did against New Orleans earlier in the year uh, in that big Monday nighter. That cannot happen. Uh, Michael Turner has got to be on. He's got to be this, a big part of the Falcon offense. The second thing is that Roddy White is going to need to get some help. Look, Roddy White has had a fantastic year, terrific year. 
one of the top five fantasy receivers. Some would argue even the best fantasy receiver this year. He's been he's been that good. Over 1,000 yards receiving, double-digit touchdowns. But again, he's probably going to have Charles Woodson or Al Harris on him. He did manage to get five catches for 49 yards in the first meeting, but still, it's not going to be easy. He's going to have to get separation somehow, but he's going to need some help. The help's going to have to come from Turner. The help's going to have to come from Harry Douglas, Michael Jenkins, somebody, Brian Finneran, somebody on that Atlanta Falcons receiving core is going to have to step up and be there to help him out. He can't do it all by himself, no matter how good of a year he's had. The third thing Atlanta's going to have to do is have long, sustaining drives in this game. If you go back and look at the box score from the last matchup between Green Bay and Atlanta, Atlanta had two drives that were that were 80-yard drives in 14 plays and took over seven minutes off the clock. Now, those are the types of drives you love to have in football because it it just it makes the other offense sit on the sideline going, man, when are we going to get the ball back? They've had the ball forever. And so... You know, that is what was a big reason why Atlanta won the first matchup. The first drive they had that was really long was one in the second quarter, 14 play, 80 yard drive, 7 minutes, 52 seconds, with a capped off by a Tony Gonzalez a four yard touchdown pass. Then in the third quarter, they had a 14 play, 80 yard drive, over 7 minutes off the clock, capped off with a Michael Turner uh, one yard run. They've, if, they've got to keep Aaron Rodgers off the field because it's only a matter of time before Rodgers finds his open man and gets his offense in tempo and rhythm no matter what, if they're, if they're not, there's a running game there. I'm going to go in this game with the Atlanta Falcons. I, you know, One of my Super Bowl picks is already out. I picked the Indianapolis Colts. I thought the Colts would maybe turn it around and find a way to get there. But you know what? They didn't do it last week. And Atlanta, I'm still going with them. I think they can get there. And it's going to be a tough game for him, but they've been very good. Matt Ryan's only lost twice uh, in his in his three years uh, at the Georgia Dome, and it's big that they've got home field advantage there. The running, I, and I think I believe in the Falcons' running game more than I believe in the Packers. I don't think James Starks is going to surprise everybody like he did last week. I think John Abraham and the rest of that defensive line for the Falcons are going to be more prepared this week. They're going to they saw what he did on film. I don't think he's going to have that type of a week two weeks in a row, which means the Packers will be one-dimensional, which means they will lose the game. So I will go with the Atlanta Falcons in this game. Uh, I think they will win this one uh, 21-7, and I think they'll find a way to slow Green Bay's offense down, and I think Green Bay's had a great year despite all the injuries. Uh, they've been the NFC's version of the Colts. Both of those teams have had so many injuries, and they've gone so much farther than anybody else thought they would go this year. Congratulations to Green Bay, but I think Atlanta wins it and goes on to the NFC title game to face the Seahawks, uh, who I picked earlier uh, in my pick this week. So I think the Falcons win this one 21-7. Enjoy the games, everybody. I'll be back for the NFC and AFC championship previews next week. I'm John Herrick. Thank you so much for watching.